Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the all new Google Chromecast with Google TV from Google. So yeah, uh, this is the HD version, brand new to the market with a price tag of $29.99. In 2021, they released the 4K model, and the price on that is around $49.99. So we are getting a significant price drop here, but keep in mind, this is the HD version. No 4K here, it'll only do up to 108060, which should be plenty for a lot of people. And keep in mind, when Black Friday comes around, or these big sales from Amazon and different companies, we're going to see a price drop on this, hopefully around the $20 price tag. So the big difference between the Chromecast with Google TV and the Amazon Fire Stick is we've got pure Google here. Instead of running Amazon Fire OS, we've got Google TV, which I'm a huge fan of, and we do have access to Google Play. So if that's something that was keeping you from the Fire Stick, then I would definitely jump over to the Chromecast, either the 4K model or the HD, which we're taking a look at in this video. Along with the dongle itself, we also get our remote. Still supports voice. Glad to see that here. And with the HD model, we only have one color variant. So with the 4K model they released in 2021, you could pick it up in blue, pink, or white. With this, we've only got the white variant to go on. And of course, we also get our power brick, our USB Type-C cable, and some batteries for the remote. So everything's here ready to go. And when it comes to specs, this is a step down from the original 4K model. For the CPU, we've got the Amlogic S805X2. Four A35 cores at 1.8 GHz. For the GPU, we've got the Mali G31 MP2. 1.5 GB of RAM as opposed to 2 with the 4K model. 8 GB of storage, plus this does support OTG storage over USB Type-C. And with the S805X2, we do have AV1 support with this chip. So with the original 4K model, we got that S905, and to tell you the truth, I don't think, you know, gaming performance and emulation performance is going to be much different on this version here with the 805. Alright, so here it is. Obviously, we're running Google TV. This is an Android TV. I mean, it's not far off, but there are some people out there that really don't like Google TV since they've been using Android TV for a while, but I'm kind of used to this. Everything I need is basically right here on the front page. If I scroll down, I've got all of my apps that I've installed. And uh, in this video, we're going to be testing out some light games and some emulation plus video playback. When it comes to Widevine DRM, we're level one here. So if you did want to watch your HD content from Netflix, Prime Video, Disney Plus, Hulu, HBO Max, you're good to go. You're going to get HD, but remember, only up to 1080p 60. On cheaper Android boxes, they're not Widevine certified, so you're only going to get standard definition. And here, with all of these apps, we get the TV version of the app, so it's going to scale really well to a larger display. Up at the very top, we've got our live videos, movies, shows, apps, library. If we head into apps, we can actually do a search here, and you can do a voice search if you want to. Real Racing. Results for Real Racing. And you will be a bit limited when it comes to games. Uh, it kind of keeps some of the lower end stuff. But let's go ahead and install one more. So directly from Google Play, installing it. Not bad at all. So yeah, limited on storage, given that we only have 8 gigs and really only like 5 gigs for the user to use. But you know, for these lighter apps, you should be good to go. Especially if you're just going to be using this for video playback. And that's the first thing I want to check out. So it's really hard for me to show you, you know, Netflix and stuff like that due to all the copywritten content. But we can do some YouTube. And I've just jumped right into a 1080p HDR video here. Got stats for nerds on screen. Through this whole video, I had zero drop frames. And I'm connected over Wi-Fi right now using my Wi-Fi 6 router. And you know, I expected this to work quite well at 1080p. That S805X2 isn't a super top of the line chip, but it does 1080p playback and under very, very well. I also went through and did a quick test with Netflix and HBO Max. Everything loads up very quickly and you can play your favorite videos at 1080p from all of those apps just fine. Next thing I wanted to test out was some native Android gaming. Now with something like this, don't expect to be playing PUBG or Call of Duty Mobile at full speed. I mean, if you could sideload it, it wouldn't run well anyway. But these lighter games, the indie stuff, the 2D stuff is going to work great on this chip. And by the way, with Crossy Road right here, I'm just using the remote that came with the unit. You can connect a Bluetooth controller, I'll show you that in a second. But I'm going to move over to another game real quick. Nice. 
Another thing I wanted to take a look at was Bluetooth controller support, and yep, works out well. I've connected an Xbox controller to the Chromecast, no issues there. I also wanted to see if we could add some kind of OTG to this device, be it extra storage, Ethernet, a micro SD card reader, and yeah, this also works. So what I've got here is just a USB Type-C adapter. It's got two USB 3.0 ports, full size and micro SD card slot, HDMI. Now on something like this, you're not going to get HDMI out but it does have an ethernet port and all of this works. We can actually add extra storage to the Chromecast very easily. This adapter that I have here is definitely a bit bulkier, but it's got everything that I need. You can buy smaller ones on Amazon. I just grabbed this one because I had it laying around and it definitely works. So you can even plug in ethernet here and get a wired connection. I've also plugged in a 32 gigabyte USB drive. And if we head over to the settings, you can see that it is detecting it as a USB drive. So I've got it set up for portable storage right now, but you could always format it and use it as internal storage. Just keep that in mind. And what I've done with this is just add a couple ROMs to it because we wanted to test out some Dreamcast, N64, PlayStation, and some PSP on this device. I definitely wanted to test out some emulation, and one thing you gotta understand is this isn't gonna run the high-end stuff. I mean, some PSP games will run on this device, but when it comes to like Chains of Olympus, it's gonna be falling on its face all the time. You could turn frame skip to two and get a pretty decent experience, but that's not what this little thing's about. We've got a low-end chip here, so no PS2, no GameCube, no Wii, no 3DS, but when it comes to the easier to emulate stuff, you can have a pretty good time with this. NES, SNES, PC Engine, you want to do some Neo Geo, CPS 1, 2, 3, even PlayStation 1 emulation works great on this little chip. And by the way, for the Game Boy Advance you saw and PlayStation that's running right now, I'm using RetroArch. Uh, FPS is up in the top right hand corner, and these games are definitely playable. Even some N64 games work really well, like this one here, Diddy Kong Racing. I'm using the Mupin 64 Plus FZ Core from Google Play, and we get a few dips here and there. But overall, I wouldn't mind playing this. Another one I tried was 007 Goldeneye, and unfortunately it was just way too laggy, and it really came down to the sound lagging out on this chip. But yeah, I mean, there are some N64 games that will work on this device, and PSP. So you'll see here right at the beginning of Tekken 6, we got a couple dips. We're at 1x resolution with filtering turned completely off and no frame skip whatsoever. This game does run at a pretty constant 60. Got a couple dips down to around 58 every once in a while, but it's not bad at all. Now, first and foremost, I would pick this up for video playback, but you know, as a side perk, we can get some emulation out of the way. The final thing I wanted to take a look at was a little bit of cloud gaming, and from Google Play directly on the device we can get GeForce Now and Stadia, but we can't get Game Pass, so this is one of my favorites. What I did was just sideload it from my USB drive, you can also send files over if you want to. And this worked out much better than I thought it would. The app itself isn't made for Google TV, but if you sideload it, we do have Google Play services, so it will start right up, and we can play our favorite Xbox cloud games here. And there is one issue that I've run into. If you take a look at the bottom, we've got this message, please update the app. And uh, this actually wasn't showing at first. It was a different message telling me that I could play my favorite games on Android. And since I don't have a touch screen, I can't get rid of that message, but I'm sure if I plugged in a mouse, I could navigate to the little X and get it out of the way. But I wanted to show this off because performance here isn't bad at all, even over Wi-Fi. I know there's a lot of people out there that aren't really into cloud gaming, but you know, with the internet connection I have here, I've had really good luck with basically all of them, Stadia, GeForce Now, and especially Game Pass. So overall, not bad for $30, but this would be an even better deal when it goes on sale for like Black Friday and different sales throughout the year at Best Buy. Right now, price is sitting at $29.99 for the HD model here. But if it was up to me, I'd actually spend the extra and get the 4K just because, you know, we'd have 4K video playback. When it comes to native Android gaming and emulation performance, these are basically on par with each other. The HD versus the 4K, I really can't see much of a difference except for the fact that we don't have 4K on the HD model. So yeah, I do think that this will be a great choice for somebody who's looking for a 1080p playback device, but you got to keep in mind that, you know, a lot of TVs nowadays already have this kind of stuff built in. Of course, some of them are slower than others, and adding something like this can get you a few more years out of your television, but you know, in the end, it's really up to you.
I will leave links for the 4K and the HD model in the description. And you know, if there's anything else you want to see running on the HD model, just let me know in the comments below. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Like always, thanks for watching.